Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about microcontroller math. Because sooner or later, you're going to come across a project where you need to do some math calculations. Now, the Arduino Nano uses the Atmega 328P microcontroller, which is an 8-bit microcontroller, and it has onboard integer math functions, which are fairly fast. But if you need to get into some advanced math problems, you'll probably have to use floating point math. Now, this microcontroller cannot do floating point math on its own, so you have to use the Arduino IDE compiler, which generates floating point math code, which tends to be very slow. So when I do my math programming, I use integer math. Now if I need something more advanced, I use integer math with scaling and fixed point. Now I program with the fourth programming language, which uses reverse Polish notation, which is kind of strange to some people, and that's probably why few people program in fourth. Okay, back before the internet, and before computers and calculators, this is what we use to solve mathematical problems, and it's called a slide rule. Now Richard Feynman and his team at the Manhattan Project used pencil and paper and slide rules and people to build the first atomic bomb, and NASA used this technology to put the first man on the moon. Now in 1971, Intel came up with the first microprocessor, then we started seeing handheld calculators come on the scene. And the leaders in calculators at that time was Texas Instruments and Hewlett Packard. Now this is the Hewlett Packard reverse Polish notation calculator. Now I used, I used this calculator going through university and a lot of people uh, thought it was strange so they didn't use this calculator. But I used this calculator as my secret weapon. I could plow through complex problems very fast and efficiently. So if you use one of these calculators you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't used one of these calculators then you should talk to somebody who has and they can tell you a few stories. Now if you notice on this calculator there's no equal sign because it uses RPN technique. And this same technique is used in the fourth programming language. So it makes math solving efficient and fast. Okay, why do people feel strange when they first encounter reverse Polish notation in math solving? Well, it goes back to elementary school. Now, if you remember back in elementary school, the teacher would put this on the blackboard. 3 plus 2 equals 5, or 3 times 2 equals 6. Now, this is prefix notation. Now, if you wanted to do this in reverse Polish notation, which is postfix, it would look like this. So it would be 3, then 2, then plus, which would give us 5, or 3, then 2, then multiply, which would give us 6. Now, this looks strange because you're so used to prefix notation back in elementary school, and you've been using that all your life. So how would we add these two numbers up in a microcontroller? How would, how would we add 3 plus 2 in a microcontroller? So here's a bit of assembly language, which runs native on the microcontroller. So we would take 3 and load it into the accumulator. Then we would take 2 and load it into general purpose register B. Then we would add A and B, which would give us the result 5 in the accumulator. So this is running native on the microcontroller, which is basically reverse Polish notation, which makes math solving efficient and fast. Okay, here's a math problem, which I will solve on the Arduino Nano, uh, using the fourth programming language, and I'll use reverse Polish notation. So you can pause the video here and get out your calculator and solve this problem. And just remember how you did it. Did you use parentheses? Did you have to uh, use a pencil and piece of paper together with your calculator? And here's the answer to the problem. It's 13, 1,329. So I'll write some code on the Arduino Nano to solve this problem in fourth, and we'll see how fast and efficient it can be. Okay, I have my Arduino Nano up and running. I'm running fourth, and I'm at my OK prompt. So we'll enter that math problem onto the command line. And the dot will actually print out the answer. So there's our answer, 1,329. So that's the math problem there, written in fourth, using the reverse Polish notation. So we'll take this a little bit slower. So first of all, we have 15 and 14. And we multiply that out, and that's put on the stack. Then we multiply 13 and 12, and that's put on the stack. Then we subtract the two. Then we divide by 3. 
Then we go over to the right hand side of the equation and we take 11 and 10 and we multiply that. And that's put on the stack. Then we take 9 and 8 and multiply that. Now we multiply the two stacks. That's the second multiplication. Then we divide by 3. Then we add the left hand side of the equation and the right hand side of the equation. And then we divide by 2 and we get our answer 1329. So that's how we do it using fourth, using a reverse Polish notation, and it's very fast and efficient. Okay, if you need to do a lot of number crunching in your project, then I would go for a hardware solution, like a 32-bit floating-point math coprocessor like the one we see here. It's made by Micro Mega, and it comes in an 18-pin DIP package, so you can easily put it on your breadboard, and you can interface it through SPI or I2C, so you can easily interface it to the Arduino Nano, so when you have a math problem, you could send it up to this math coprocessor, and it won't interfere with your Arduino programming, it won't slow it down at all. Then when you need to answer, you just download it from the chip. Now this chip does a lot more than, than math. If you look down at the features, it does fast Fourier transforms, it has a serial port, so you could feed a, a GPS into the serial port, and it will parse out the NEMA strings, so you could parse out the lat latitude and longitude. It's got uh, ADD converters, it's got some timers, uh, it's got an internal oscillator. Now this chip costs around $20, so it's a bit pricey. But in the long run, it could save you a lot of headaches.